As college students, your goal is not just to learn facts, but to learn how to critically think and reason. In many of the classrooms you'll enter, your preconceived notions and sometimes deeply held beliefs will be challenged. College should be a time for you to embrace the opportunity to hone your own ideas and strengthen your opinions both inside and outside the classroom. The value of research and education is significantly diminished if professors fear retribution for unpopular findings or if their work is done with interference of biased stakeholders. This is why maintaining academic freedom is a core value of higher education. For teaching and learning to flourish, professors must be free from institutional censorship and intimidation. They must be allowed to run class as they see fit in order to facilitate learning and discussion. Similar to how First Amendment protections allow us to question the orthodox and test the controversial, academic freedom allows professors and researchers to conduct their studies without fearing negative consequences based on their findings. What discoveries could Galileo have made if he was not charged with heresy and banned from teaching for finding the Earth revolves around the Sun? This is the kind of question we hope to avoid by protecting the academic freedom of faculty. While you may question your professors, and in fact sometimes may be encouraged to do so, professors maintain the right to determine the content of class lessons and the flow of classroom discussion. Curiosity and a healthy amount of skepticism are a key component of learning, but respecting your professors as leaders in the classroom environment is also critical. Classrooms are not public forums, such as public sidewalks or green spaces. They are spaces where discussion is curated by professors based on relevance to the topic at hand. To illustrate, let's look at an example of a student being confrontational to the point of violating a professor's right to run the classroom. In this hypothetical scenario, consider not just the impact disruptive behavior has on the individual professor, but the impact it can have on the entire class learning experience. Hi, welcome to Bio 101. As you can see from your syllabus, our first lesson is on evolution and we'll be reading excerpts from Darwin's On the Origin of Species. Next will be, yes, you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to say that I read The Origin of Species in high school and found it reductive and not persuasive. I'm glad you're familiar with the text, but this is not a conversation for the moment since we're just reviewing the syllabus. But I hope our class discussions and the additional readings we'll be covering will give you a well-rounded view of the strides the scientific community has made regarding the understanding of evolution. Please write those thoughts that you have on Darwin down so you remember them when we get to the lesson on the origin of species. Sound good? Will do, thanks. Excuse me, but I find the theory of evolution offensive to my belief system. There's no way we came from monkeys. Okay, I understand your reluctance, but I hope by the end of our first unit, you'll understand how scientists have continued to build upon Darwin's original observations to find more scientific evidence for evolution. Again, we really need to move. You can fudge scientific observations to prove anything, and I won't be swayed. This is brainwashing. I'll have you know my last name is Smith. I'm one of the Smiths whose name is on the building we're in right now. I'm going to tell my parents to call the dean and trustees unless you stop teaching this blasphemy. You need to sit down or leave the class. My lessons can't be dictated by donors. If you'd like to talk more about this, we can speak after class or during office hours, but right now I need to get through the rest of the syllabus so you can start your first lab. You're being dismissive, and this is bull. As you can see, when questioning a professor devolves into being disruptive, it can hinder the educational experience, not just for yourself, but the entire class. The first student in this scenario questioned the professor, but did so in a respectful way. The second student, on the other hand, did not respect the professor's request to reserve comments for a later date. Disruptive behavior is not an effective tool for persuasion in the classroom. If a professor deems it time to move on to the next part of their lesson, and you still have comments, please ask your professor if you can continue your discussion after class or attend office hours. That being said, when you enter a classroom, you should expect to be treated fairly, free from discrimination and harassment and to be graded fairly on the merits of your work and contributions. If you have a dispute with a professor and are unable to come to a resolution or feel you are being discriminated against, reach out to your Dean of Students or Ombudsman. They can serve as a third party mediator and help make sure your educational experience is being respected. 
college is a time where you should take charge of your own educational experience. If you see something in a syllabus that gives you pause, or if a class discussion becomes too uncomfortable, reach out to your professor to see if they have any advice on how to approach the material or how to decide if the class is right for you. A circumstance like this may be unavoidable. Take for example, viewing violent images when studying forensic science. You can ask your professor for advice if it makes you uncomfortable, but that kind of content is intrinsic to the nature of such a class, and your professor is under no obligation to whitewash the realities of such a profession or to change their lesson materials. Learning should challenge you, but only you know your limits. So you should take charge of deciding if a class is right for you. To provide an example of a student who went about this the wrong way, at Crafton Hills College in California, a student signed up for an English class that focused on graphic novels. The professor had chosen some books involving LGBTQ relationships, which went against the student's personal beliefs. Instead of reviewing the syllabus, Realizing that the novels they were going to cover contained content the student found offensive, and exploring options to sign up for a different class, she demanded the books be, in her words, quote, eradicated from the system, end quote. While it was in her right to advocate for whatever cause she wanted outside the classroom, it was also in the professor's right to choose which books to cover in a special topics course such as this. The real academic freedom violation in this situation came when the college told the professor that, in light of the resulting public controversy, he must place a content warning on his syllabi. While content warnings are something that professors are free to use at their own discretion, mandating such a warning can have a chilling effect and can lead professors to steer clear of controversial content. Especially for an untenured professor, the fear of being punished for forgetting a specific content warning or not correctly predicting how a work of literature could trigger a student may lead them to stay away from thought-provoking works or class discussions. Luckily, Crafton Hills College realized that mandated content warnings would endanger the professor's autonomy and discourage the kind of critical thinking necessary for learning, so it retracted the request. The lesson here is that part of empowering yourself to take control of your educational experience is respecting your professor's right to academic freedom. We'll leave you with this quote from Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter's opinion in Sweezy v. New Hampshire on the importance of academic freedom. A university ceases to be true to its own nature if it becomes the tool of a church or state or any sectional interest. A university is characterized by the spirit of free inquiry, its ideal being the ideal of Socrates. To follow the argument where it leads, this implies the right to examine, question, modify, or reject traditional ideas and beliefs. Dogma and hypothesis are incompatible, and the concept of immutable doctrine is repugnant to the spirit of a university. The concern of its scholars is not merely to add and revise facts in relation to an accepted framework, but to be ever examining and to modify the framework itself.